Morning paper, morning star. Paper, mister? <laughs> Fedora 8 is kind of taking the next step. One of the things we've seen is uh, the opportunity for a lot of the tools that were brand new in Fedora in Fedora 7 and hadn't really had a chance to be used by a lot of people yet, uh, start to mature and see uh, communities uh, communities of our users and developers pick them up and start working on them. So one of the cool things that comes out of that in my hand here, holding a one gigabyte USB key. I've got a laptop sitting next to me that has another one of these things plugged into it and this was used, the entire distribution lives on this USB key. Getting that feature uh, to work was one of the things that uh, was, a, was a Fedora 7 deliverable that has gotten a lot stronger here in Fedora 8. We've got a few different versions of Fedora that we're putting out uh, this time around. Uh, we've got a, uh, two desktop versions, uh, one based on GNOME and one based on KDE. Uh, we've got a version of Fedora that is uh, specific for software developers. And the reason I mention the USB keys is because the total size of that custom version of Fedora is larger than 700 megabytes, right? So you can't put it on a live CD. You either have to put it on a DVD or uh, a USB key, which uh, is, is really sort of a uh, much more kind of uh, exciting way to do it. The fourth uh, sort of customized version of Fedora that we're putting out this time is similar to the software developer one, but this one is focused uh, more for people who are kind of uh, electrical uh, engineers or computer systems uh, kind of people. And the reason why that's kind of interesting is uh, because it is, from the Fedora point of view, a success story of community. One of the things we always hoped when we created all these tools for people to build their own customized versions of Fedora is that community people would, would, would take them and they would create versions of Fedora that were useful for them uh, and they'd share them back with us uh, and basically say, here's the configuration file that I used. Uh, because all the tools are open, uh, you can duplicate it yourself and, and prove, you know, uh, prove that you get the same result that we did. Uh, please you know, consider including it in Fedora. And that's what this uh, sort of uh, electrical engineering, uh, uh, they call it the Fedora Electronics Lab. Spin is. It was created by uh, a Fedora community member named Chitlesh Gura, who uh, lives in France. Uh, maybe he lives in Germany now. He's been moving around uh, somewhere in Europe. And uh, I think that his main reason for creating it was because these were all the tools that he was using while he was doing his uh, his work in college. Uh, and so um, he built this thing. He tested it. He uh, allowed it to go through the kind of Fedora QA process. And so we're including it and. Uh, as a as a customized version of Fedora, and and uh, and we don't know how many people are going to download it, but it doesn't matter. The fact is that it's there, uh, and it's uh, sort of a uh, uh, proof that uh, this process works. And it's also a good example for other people who might uh, have an, a similar idea uh, that that they can achieve it. <laughs>